it's really admirable, I guess, just being level-headed. You have to feel a little bit special. At least that song has made such an impression. I want to tell you a real quick story. I was backstage. I was at a, a Jack Johnson concert, and he has this singer that's uh, going out with, with him named Paula Fugal. And uh, so they introduced me. They said, Paul, this is Paula. And I said, hey, we could do a song together. And she <laughs> said, she said, you know, I was named after that song. Oh, my gosh. I'm here in Kansas City. Uh, very shortly, we'll be singing at the reception of, of a man and a woman over in Lee Summit, Missouri. And his name is Paul, and her name is Paula. And they, they found out that I, the real thing was over here across town, and so they want me to come and sing. Wow. <laughs> I just, I've sung at more things, and, and more people have written me and told me that the very thing you're talking about, it, it's you know, it's a blessing and an honor more than anything else, Paul. Yeah. I think it's interesting also... You have your, your career with Paul and Paula, but you're also a Christian singer. Yes, I am. I've, I've, uh, part of my story is that uh, near about after about a year of running around with Paul and Paula, I just got tired of it. I just didn't want to do that anymore. I just sang in this little song. I loved the little song and all, and I loved the career, and it was, an easy, it was easy money and everything else. But I just felt like inside there was something else that I'm supposed to go do. And I left in the middle of a Dick Clark tour. I just kind of left and left her stranded and it was a terrible thing to do but i look back i wouldn't have done it if i'd have thought but i had a girl back home on this judy i mentioned earlier uh we got back together after the song was a hit and so and we were kind of ready to be married and so i kind of went back home and, and got married and, and but i was still writing songs just gift uh, that you have to, to write everybody can't write songs and and it was from God, and I, I started writing songs about God <laughs> with these same little secular melodies that not many people were doing that. And at that time, most if you wrote a song about God, it was kind of a church hymn or something like you read in some of these uh, church hymn books. I started writing these kind of contemporary Christian things, and that's kind of caught on. I turned out to be one of the first that ever, that, you know, that did that on a national label, at least, uh, Word Records out of Waco, Texas. And so that started a career, and I started going all over the place at churches and things, so I went from one career to another one just real quick. Tell us about a little bit about Jill. Do you still t stay in touch with her? Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, we've got two uh, oldies gigs coming up with Bowser from Sha Na Na Days. Uh, he's a promoter now, and we do things. We still we don't do a lot of them. We go out to California here in September and we've got a thing in Hartford, Connecticut with him, with oldies, with some other oldies groups like the Angels and like uh, Maurice Williams and the Zodiacs and different ones that are still doing some stuff. Uh, we'll do some stuff with Sam the Sham, uh, of the Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs and others. We still do oldies uh, concerts occasionally if, if the you know if people find us. I do a. I do a, a thing here in Kansas City uh, uh, with another lady. I play like she's Paula uh, at this reunion, a big class reunion thing with some local bands and stuff. There's always people who remember and still like those oldies. And so uh, Hey Paula thing is remembered by a lot of people. And uh, my royalties that I get every year means that it's been played someplace in the world every day since 1963, and that's a blessing. So. Wow, that's incredible. One of the other songs called Young Lovers that was kind of like the follow-up to... Hey, Paula. Young Lovers is kind of proof that we were more than just a one-hit wonder. <laughs> when I wrote the song initially uh, up in the gymnasium where I lived at the time for, for this Russell guy that had asked me to write it, well, I wrote a long, and when we went in the studio uh, with this Major Bill Smith, this other fellow, Marvin Montgomery, he, he was the guy in the studio that was the arranger and all, and he says, this song is too long. He said, uh, he took out part of it. He said, this part here is not necessary. You're going to do these two little verses and this little, little chorus. You're going to repeat the chorus, and that's it. So the part that he cut out on the way to the airport, probably two or three months later, the mother and, and Jill and I, we sat in the back seat and put some verses to it, and it became Young Lovers and went to number six in the nation. <laughs> so we, that was a good day of songwriting that weekend or whatever that was. So. Well, tell us about the other song. Uh, there was one called First Quarrel. First Quarrel was written by another fellow, a band leader there in, uh, I can't even think of his name now, in Fort Worth. I'll tell people, I said, you know, our first two songs we wrote, and uh, they should have stuck with us because they were in the top ten, uh, but this first quarrel, uh, that, that I think it went to about number 26 or something like that, and we just slowly, slowly, of course, I left, and that, that had something to do with it, but I dare say if our career had been handled correctly, I might, I might have stayed and, and kept doing it, but it was kind of an afterthought for old Major Bill. 
RCA was trying to get a hold of us in those days, too. They wanted to, us to jump ship from Mercury over to them, and maybe if we'd have done that, uh, but it would have meant me moving up to the coast, to uh, the East Coast, and I probably would have never married the lady that I married to. And the timing was rotten, I guess, so uh, that's kind of what happened. So, If you could put it into words, what is it you like about music? I don't know. The, there's something about music that just kind of gets down in your soul or in your gut and in your heart. I have so many songs that I've written, both Christian and secular or whatever you want to call them. I think God looks on music as good and bad. I don't think he looks on it as secular and Christian or all that stuff. Music is something just beautiful that is different than anything. So I tell you, harmonizing just sends me in la-la land. I just love harmonies and four-part harmonies, like the barbershop quartets and other things. I'd rather harmonize than eat, somebody said, and I feel that way, too. I could sit and, and jam with somebody at the age of 70, almost I am, all night. Um, someone said that human beings are the only ones that can sing, that angels can't sing. I don't know if that's true, <laughs> but it's special, and I know that <clears throat> anybody that can't sing, I feel sorry for them. I know Jill, when she was little, she used to think everybody could sing, but everybody can't sing. I, I used to stand beside an old boy in church at, at home. It was a monotone, but... Again, it's like songwriting. It's a gift from God. Music is a very special gift. So, yeah, I have to agree with you on that. Well, you just said a second ago, it piqued my curiosity. You said you'd rather harmonize than eat. I really enjoy harmony. I, I mean, I used to work with a group called the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and I traveled all over the country with all all my heroes became my best friends, and it was a great job. I did that for some fourteen years after after Hey Paula and here in Kansas City. It was in my headquarters and. We'd get together late at night with these old athletes. I could put all the boys to bed at these camps, and we'd just sing all night. You'd forget all about food. I mean, it's just a fun, wonderful thing to do, you know. Well, let me ask you, what is your all-time favorite meal? I think a nice tuna casserole. How about that? <laughs> You're not the first person that's told me that, that's for sure. <laughs> really, I like a nice tuna casserole, maybe a little salad and a little bit of green beans. Uh, that would be wonderful. I could I could live on that, I think. So. Mr. Hildebrand, I have to ask you one final question before we part. It's been a great pleasure to speak to you. What would you like to say to all the people who are listening from all around the world? One of the things after all these years is still blowing and going is American Idol and and all the talent shows and all this kind of stuff. And I know that some of the some of the younger kids, they just think that that's the greatest thing in the world. I just, I just want them to know that uh, I don't mean to preach at anybody. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, the Bible's been around a lot longer. You know, I've got a copy of 1599 Geneva Bible sitting here, and it's the same as anything else that's out on the market today. In the middle of all of my career, I got to know God well and, uh, and his son. And I tell you what, that makes music better. And all that stuff they paint on the television and all the stuff about music and all it, being a star and all that stuff, it's not what it appears to be. It, it looks like it's all great on the TV, but, I mean, in all reality, you, you best get a relationship going with God for whatever uh, he wants you to do in your life. And if music's one of them, then, then have at it. But, boy, too much of anything is, is too much. For me, my story is that I... I had to come back home and kind of get it together before I could even go out again. So I'd just say more than worshiping music, you better worship the the God who brought us. So, Very well put. Well, sir, it's been a great pleasure, as I said, and uh, thank you very much for this interview. Tell all the listeners out there where they can visit you on the web. I do have a website. I, it's not fixed completely yet, I've got, but I've got a bunch of things on it. It's just called rayhildebrand.com. H-I-L-D-E-B-R-A-N-D, Hildy Brand, first name Ray, and I was Paul of Paul and Paula. But it has I've had several, two or three careers, and I'm kind of in my fourth career now by myself again, still doing things. But they can find me at rayhildebrand.com or the Hey Paula Boy, and there's all my my songs. I've done 15, 16 albums and all kind of other things, pictures on there of me and uh, Paul and Paula with the Beatles and all these different things. So they can find me at rayhildebrand.com. All right, very good. Thank you so much. Okay, Paul, God bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye. All right, bye.